Hello everyone! This is again Sir Jester Soriano continuing the discussion on last week's video lesson. This covers formulating hypothesis which was discussed partially last week and identifying what appropriate test statistic to use depending on the situation. First of all, we will discuss how hypotheses are being tested. Assuming the research problem is established, listed here are the steps to be followed. Step 1. State your null and alternative hypothesis. Last week's discussion covers this one. We'll just provide more examples so you can master it fully. Step 2. Draw a picture to visualize your problem. We will use the normal curve to visualize on how we will decide on what to do with our null hypothesis. Recall that we either reject or do not reject our null hypothesis. Step 3. We state our significance level, or on other sources, we call that the alpha level. This is denoted by the Greek letter alpha. It is on percentage form or on decimal form. Significance level is the probability of making the wrong decision when the null hypothesis is true. In some problems, significance level are specified. Whenever it is not, we will use 0.05 as our significance level. Step 4. Find the test statistics. There are many tests to be discussed throughout this course. In this video lesson, we'll be only discussing two tests. And the last step, we decide on what to do with our null hypothesis. To understand fully, what is better than doing an example together? On our first problem, the average time in a week that a student stays in the library at Achiever Senior High School is 73 minutes with a standard deviation of 5 minutes and the population of time is normally distributed. When the new login and logout mechanism is introduced, a sample of 49 students has been found out that the average time they stay in the library is 80 minutes. In this problem, the parameter of the study is the whole Achiever Senior High School. Let's start with step 1. We write our null and alternative hypothesis. Hit the pause button and try to write your own hypothesis. In the problem, we are testing if the average time that a student stays in the library is 80 minutes. We got this by testing 49 students. This is higher than the original average time of the whole Achiever Senior High School, which is 73 minutes. Now, let's recall that the null hypothesis is always in negative form. Ergo, we can write our hypothesis as the average time that a student stays in the library is not significantly different from 73, or in symbols, we can write this as mean is equal to 73. The alternative H1 is the opposite of our null hypothesis. We can write it as H1 mean is greater than 73. This is based from our observation that the average time is 80, which is greater than the original average time of 73. In some cases, alternative hypothesis can be written as mean is not equal to 73 depending on what the researcher wants to do. This will be discussed further on the later chapters. Let us skip steps 2 and 3, since this video lessons only covers step 1 and 4. Moreover, these steps require more time and thorough discussions that I will leave for my colleagues on the preceding weeks. For step 4, the test statistics when our null hypothesis involves the population mean are as follows. When the standard deviation is known or when the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, we use the z values in the standard normal distribution. Else, when the standard deviation is unknown and n is less than 30, we use the t values in the t distribution. So once we finished all steps from 1 to 4, we can now decide on what to do with our null hypothesis on step 5. I will give you two more examples and state your h sub 0 and h sub 1 and identify which test statistics to be used. Hit the pause button and write your answers in a piece of paper 
and play again to check if your answers are correct. I hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thanks for watching!